Psalm 84, I love this song. And we are looking at this song, just thinking about being back in God's house this morning. Also, uh, thinking since Memorial Day. You know, Memorial Day, man, it sure has changed. Yeah, uh, it's changed for me. Because uh, Memorial Day was always a patriotic day in my thoughts. Patriot, thinking about veterans, and I remember, you know, that uh, 17 years ago, <coughs> um, first experience we had with Lee, you've heard me tell this story many times, we came, the Bibles were here, uh, Pastor Bible was here, and he asked us to come up and visit and to preach, and so I preached Sunday, we stayed overnight with them, and Monday morning we went to the memorial parade and the meeting in the square. And I thought, wow, this town of Lee is different. Because uh, you had a lot of the old town veterans there, uh, that some of them gone on to be with the Lord. And I hadn't seen anything like uh, to, to gather in town square and have prayer. And, and also to honor the veterans, and it was so, so nice. And uh, in my mind, Memorial Day has always been thanking the Lord for the freedoms we had and those that fought for our country. Now, as time has gone on, uh, and so many of you know this, especially our elderly ones, uh, it also is that remembering loved ones that have gone on, thinking about loved ones, and um, and that adds a adds a um, what a heaviness. It can add a heaviness to it. And yesterday morning we went to pick flowers out uh, for Heidi's grave and I can't even believe that it's true and then it came up on my wife's phone it could somehow her phone gives memories um, that Heidi graduated 10 years ago the same day, I never would have thought I'd be picking flowers out for a grave ten years later. And then I never would have thought that Daniel, her husband, would be getting married. Wow. A lot, a lot to take in. And I tell you what. Thank the Lord we have the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord that this isn't all there is. Amen. Thank the Lord that uh, the sufferings of this time are not worthy to com compare to the glory which shall be revealed. Amen. Thank the Lord that this is just for a moment. This light affliction, this light affliction. God can say that. I have a hard time saying that. This light affliction, it's just by the moment. It's not worthy to compare to that weight of glory which shall be revealed. Memorial Day, Memorial Day takes on different meaning. Uh, or you might say a fuller meaning. But you know, you think uh, Memorial Day and those that have fought for our freedoms and those that have gone on before and it's Christ is all in all. Christ is all in all. And 
I know it's Memorial Day, and probably should be preaching more um, on the patriotic line, but you know, if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, if it wasn't for the house of the Lord, church, I love my temple and hills. My country kisses me. Uh, I love my temple and hills. If it wasn't for the house of the Lord, We wouldn't meet many of our loved ones ever. I mean, she go on and on. It's just like, what can you say? If it wasn't for the house of the Lord, we have nothing. Right. Nothing. This psalm here, Psalm 84, is so, so powerful. And want to just read down through the passage and comment as we go along. Uh, preached on this before, but I thought this was fitting as we all come back into God's house this morning. Uh, I want to look at six reasons why we, and I think I've preached it before as uh, why I love the church, but I'm going to do it from the angle we, we love the church. We love the local assembly of believers. There's nothing like it. Ephesians 5.25 tells us Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. For it. Um, one's interest in church is a fair measure of one's interest in Christ. How interested you are in church shows how interested you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of relationship you have with him. The more you love the Lord, the more you love his house. The less you love the Lord, the less you love his house. The world, the lost, don't care a thing about God's house and really doesn't bother them that we haven't been able to gather for so long. But we love the Lord Jesus and we gather together to worship him. In Psalm 27, look at Psalm 27. In verse 4, David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. Well, today, for many Americans, there's so many things, there's so many things they're seeking after and desiring, they can't get focused. So many things on their plate. Well, David narrowed it all down. You know, our life, our life is to revolve around the house of the Lord. Uh, it is to begin the week with the Lord. And just to go through the week with the Lord on our mind. And then come back to start the next week. David says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know what heaven is pictured on? It's, heaven is pictured, it's spoken of as the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. People that don't want to go to church their whole life, really, they don't want to go to heaven. They don't want to go be with the Lord. Heaven's like the house of the Lord. What a day that will be. It says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 84 starts out, how amiable, that means beloved, that means lovely. So it's talking about God's house where it says, are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, it even fainteth for the court of the Lord. They're talking about the court of the Lord. Isn't this interesting? When the psalmist says, My soul longeth it even fainted for the courts of the Lord. You know what that means? It's talking about the inside. The courts. Coming inside the courts. Coming into God's house. There's nothing like it. There's nothing that compares to God's house. It's so wonderful. So he says, how amiable, lovable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. 
My soul longeth, they even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord. My heart, my flesh, crieth out for the living God. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. And when you come into the house of the Lord, when you come into that place of worship, you see it mentioned as the tabernacle, but when you come into that place of worship, it just draws you to the Lord. It makes you cry out for the Lord. First reason why we love the church is because our lives, our lives have been changed inside the church. Our lives have been changed. We found, we found the Lord Jesus. I remember when I was just uh, first grade, first grade, and You've heard me say so many times that if I rode the bus, rode the bus out to church and um, received the Lord as my Savior, and I remember uh, just being so excited. And then when I was, I was seventh grade, when I was 13 years old, 13 years old, I was baptized. I remember just wanting to stand up. And let people know that I had believed on the Lord. And just the more you love the Lord, the more life even makes sense. The more you follow the Lord, the more life makes sense. And you know, it was when I came into God's house when, and when I found the Lord Jesus, we know that. The house of God doesn't save anybody, but it points people to Jesus who saves. And look at Psalm 73. Turn back a few. I can remember I received the Lord young, but then there were some problems. Churches had problems. Churches aren't perfect. The Lord Jesus is perfect. Churches aren't perfect. There were some problems. And my family stopped going to church, and, and by the time I was 12, 13 years old, I had all kinds of difficulties running through my mind. And you look around and you say, what, you know, things don't make sense. Well, Psalm 73 quite the picture here that this, that's what was the psalmist here he's having some difficulties, he's struggling through some thoughts, he says truly God is good to Israel even to such as are of a clean heart, but as for me my feet were go almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble with other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Their pride compass them about as a chain, violence covers them as a garment, their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. If you go to public school, you uh, get in with these kids, that are either the super athletes or the, uh, the big deals, they're popular, and, uh, they're strong, and uh, you start thinking, you know, they're, they're cool, and uh, they seem in, and just, just get these battles in life. Uh, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, what am I going to follow? Um, goes down through the passage, and um, verse 12 says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have plunged my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. So he's got all these things running through his mind that he can't understand. It seems like uh, he says, I've washed my hands and, and uh, to no avail. What is it? Why follow God? Why 
Then, verse 17, verse 17, he says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Things started making sense when he went into God's house. Starts making sense that life is all about knowing the Lord Jesus as your Savior. And life is all about serving Him and loving Him and His purpose and meaning in life and following the Lord Jesus. And I love, I love the church because, I should say we love the church. We love the church because our lives have been changed. Uh, we found the Lord Jesus and His purpose, His purpose and meaning in life. Secondly, secondly, we love, we love, and this has overlapped. Uh, secondly, we love the church because we can center our lives. We can center our lives around the church. The church. That really bothers some people. That really bothers some people. It even bothers uh, the modern Christians. Modern Christians. Even the evangelical. Oh, you, you know, we center our lives around the Lord. And we don't need to be faithful. We don't need to be committed. We don't need to be dedicated. We don't need to be devoted. I remember reading about a so-called, um, supposed to be a Christian rock group that came to a church right down here in Lincoln. It was in the newspaper. Advertised this, uh, actually, no, I read it. I went to the church's episode and I went to their Facebook to look at it. And it came out that they had gone to a concert, this Christian rock group. And... So I Googled, I want to read about this Christian rock group. I could not find any salvation testimony for the ones that sang in the group. You, you know, today you can put the names in and you can Google it and you can read it. No Christian testimony. Well, just because it says it's a Christian rock group doesn't mean they've been born again. That's right. Doesn't mean that they've been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes they think, oh, I can sing, I'm a good singer. They go to some church, they start singing, and then they they get accepted and popular, they start touring, and they never even been born again. I remember our friend Garlock, an uh, old timer that we used to go around preaching about Christian music standards, and he was on the uh, he got challenged. He was at some church and some uh, Christian radio station invited him to uh Somebody wanted to debate him about Christian rock music on the radio. So Frank is on the radio talking to this guy and uh, going back and forth, butting heads. And uh, Frank says, well, let me just ask you, when did, just as a matter of conversation, when did you receive the Lord as your Savior? And the guy said, I always, I've always, I grew up in the church. I've always, been, you know, I've always been a Christian. And Frank said, no, when were you born again? And the guy said, no, tell me. I was, you know, I've always been a Christian. I grew up in it. He didn't have a clue at what the Bible teaches about regeneration. He didn't even know. He's, he's arguing on the radio about why he believes in Christian rock music, and he's not even a Christian. I went to this site to look up this group, and I couldn't find any salvation uh, testimony, but the head of the group said, um, they asked him, well, what would you, what do you think that you would be doing if you weren't out doing your rock concerts around the country? He said, I'd still be stuck in my little church. I'd still probably be in my little church and my little town and like that would be a disgrace. Yeah. Stuck in my little church, serving in my little church, helping in my little church, 
Wouldn't that be a terrible thing? But now I'm a big deal going all around the country and making money. We love the church. We love the church because we can center our lives around it. We can center our lives around it. Just to our friends, our families, our loved ones, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not about fame and fortune. It's about loving one another, supporting one another in the Christian life. So you got to love the way the psalmist puts it in verse 3. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself. She just, it's like you build your nest in God's house. You send in your life in God's house. You, from the time you're saved until the Lord calls you home, it might be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, whatever. When I was a kid, used to go to the neighbor's barn. They had a nice barn, a basketball court in their barn. A nice big barn with a basketball court built into it. And we'd go in there and the swallows, the barn swallows. And you go in there, they dive down and you feel good right by your ear. <coughs> They're protecting their territory. But they were, you know, they make their nest in the barn. The picture here is is that the birds, the birds will make their nest somehow in the tabernacle, sides of the tabernacle, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to dwell in God's house. We're supposed to love God's house. And not only that, just like a, a swallow, we ought to defend God's house. You know, swoop down, I, I, I shouldn't tell the story about that. I took my BB gun. <laughs> I took my BB gun to the barn. I didn't like those swallows swooping down at my head. <laughs> and my friend's mother was quick to take my BB gun away from me. <laughs> she did not shoot my swallows. God will protect his children that nest in his house. God will look out for his children that love his house. But you're on your own if you, you think, oh, why, why doesn't God help me? Why doesn't God look out for me? When you don't care about God and you don't care about God's house, you're on your own. We love the church because our lives have been changed. We found the Lord Jesus. We love the church because we can center our lives around the church. Number three, we love the church because we can bring our children up. Our children up in the church, in God's house. Parents today are so, so concerned about, oh, i got to get my child involved in uh, the sports program. The sports program. You know, uh, sports build character. Ha! Sports build. A lot of that. I played sports. Let me tell you what. If I have any character at all, it's but through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sports bullied my head up so big. You know, we won, we won for the little Christian schools here in St. May, we won two state championships. And you walk around and you're, and you're a Christian. You're a Christian. And your head's still so bloated. You walk around and I had I bought a, you know, I had my school jacket. You walk around, and God says He hates the crowd. Look, mm -hmm. you you strut around, and you put on there that you know you won the state championship. There's nothing like there's nothing like bringing the children up 
is a nurture and admonition in God's house. In God's house. And some parents are always, you know, it's all sports or it's all education. You know, education. I'm going to get my son into West Point. I'm going to get. I went to school with a girl and I ended up going to West Point. I hadn't seen her for years. And I ran into her years later, started talking to her, and it was obvious she didn't even acknowledge the Lord anymore. She didn't even want to acknowledge the Lord anymore. I don't know, maybe she must have never even really believed in the Lord. It says here, it says here, Yea, the sparrow had found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thy altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. He's my King and my God. We love the Lord because we can bring our children up. We, we, love, we love the church because we can bring our children up in the church. Boy Scouts, doesn't compare. Just doesn't compare. I got a, I got a man. Uh, I, um, boy, this is years ago, and I'll never forget. I was youth pastor down in Pensacola, Florida, and we had some kids come out to youth group. So I went to visit in the home, and lo and behold, the dad was a Southern Baptist preacher. The dad was a preacher. He had his ordination framed and hanging on the wall in the living room. And I'm talking to him, and I'm saying, you know, I youth group for our water program. Uh, I just said in passing, you know, it's better than uh, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, because, uh, you know, he, what? He stops me, what? It's not better than the Boy Scouts. Said, uh, yeah, because we tell kids how they can be born again, how they can be saved. And as I talked to this preacher, I realized he was as social gospel as could be and did not know the Lord. Wow. And he was all riled up. We, well, we have Boy Scouts uh, in our church. They come to meet in our church. Well, you can have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and whatever other Scouts you want to throw in there. But if you don't bring the child up to know the Lord and the Savior, then your child is going to go to hell. We love, we love the church. We love the church. The church, the local church, that preaches the gospel and proclaims Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Jesus is the only way. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising the Selah. That Selah means pause and think about that. Those that dwell in the house of the Lord, they'll still be praising the Lord. They're just going to keep praising the Lord. We love the church. We love the church number four because we can praise the Lord in church. Just praise the Lord. I love Sunday nights. I love Sunday nights coming in, hearing testimonies. I hope you got testimonies, praises saved up. We haven't been able to take them when you're sitting in the cars, spread out there. <coughs> But I love the praises, the testimonies. Those that dwell in the house of the Lord, they'll still be praising the Lord. Oh, interesting. People that drop out of church or just drag in the church once in a while, drag out of the church. And when you talk to them, they're not praising the Lord. They're talking about, I've got this problem, i got that problem, this has happened, that's happened. For those that are faithful, they're praising the Lord. They're still
still praising the Lord. <laughs> Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Acre, that says, means weeping, weeping. You yeah, go through hard times, difficult times, that bring you to tears, that break your heart. If you stay faithful to God's house, He just takes you from strength to strength. Strength to strength. He keeps you going. Not only that, He says He takes that, that weeping, and He says, Who passes through the valley of Bacon, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. The Lord takes those difficulties and brings strength. I just remember as a kid, you've heard me say this many times, when my mother was struggling and in and out of the hospital, and I can remember as a tough you know, an uh, athletic teenager coming, standing in church, just broken and standing and crying while I was singing the hymns and worrying about my mother and also just thinking there's nothing like the house of the Lord find comfort, to find strength, to find peace, to find hope. There's nothing like, there's nothing like the house of the Lord. We just go from strength to strength. You stand in God's house, and you sing day by day, and with each passing moment. Day by day, and with each passing moment, and the chill goes down your spine. No matter what difficulty you're, you're facing, whatever problem you're facing, it's like you know, day by day, and with each passing moment, I know, I know God is with me. Yes, there's tears. Yes, there's struggles. Yes, there's heartbreak, heartaches and heartbreaks and anguish. But God is with me. God is with me. You stay in God's house and you sing, does Jesus care? Does Jesus care? And you say, yes, I know. I know he cares. God is good. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. There's just nothing like, I don't know how I can make it through I, I call me weak. Call me weak. You got it right. You got it right. I don't know how I can make it through this life without God's house. God's house that upholds the Lord Jesus as the only way of salvation. And that salvation is a free gift. In the Lord. I love God's house. We love, we love God's house because we've been strengthened and comforted so many times in God's house. Lastly, number six, we love God's house because we can be used of the Lord. We can be used of the Lord in God's house. Now, you don't have to be the preacher or a preacher to be used of the Lord in God's house. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher. Sure appreciate each Sunday school teacher. Um, it's so important. Uh, you don't have to be a what? Carpenter that works around the church. So that's another big <coughs> blessing. Or even somebody that comes in and clean. And we appreciate that uh, so much. We appreciate that. Just being faithful to God's house. Right. Just being faithful to God's house encourages everybody around you. That's right. It encourages 
everyone around you. It strengthens everyone. And what's it say in, in Hebrews chapter 10? Hebrews chapter 10. The verse that, that many Christians just it irritates them. We got to be honest here. A lot of Christians, oh, I remember a Christian man coming to me. This is way back. Uh, it wasn't in this church. I remember a man coming to me, and I wasn't a uh, pastor. I remember a man saying, faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. All the preacher preaches about is faithfulness. And he was really bothered. Well, we want to hear when we get to heaven, well done, our good and faithful servant. Right. We do want to hear that when we get to heaven. In Hebrews chapter 10, where it says in verse 25, Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together, as the man or some is. There's always going to be some that just want to come to church whenever it's convenient, uh, whenever they got a problem that they think the Lord might encourage them, uh, some that just come whenever. Um, God says, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Be faithful. Uh, when the church is assembling, assemble. But then you got that, see what it says here? But exhort one another. You know what encourages? Do you encourage other people when you're in church? You just encourage other people. It helps. It, it lifts them up. God said it. God said it. That's what happens. And then he says, And so much the more as you see the day approaching. That is, we ought to be faithfully attending God's house more and more instead of less and less. Right. But what are we seeing today? Churches closing down prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. Churches closing down Sunday evenings, even Sunday evenings. You know, one service is enough. Used to be when I was a kid, you could have special meetings. You have special meetings. Ding, uh, ding tool. Anybody ever hear ding tool? You did? Uh, he was a chalk artist and a preacher, a good preacher. And he came to Clinton Baptist Church. The place was packed out. But he could only do that. I'm um, being, I'm um, being, this isn't the case. This is the case today. You could only plan your meeting like, um, maybe Saturday, Sunday night and Tuesday, and maybe you could do it till Wednesday. But then, no, you could have left back in those days, you old time, you remember, you could all week long that every night would be packed out. Sometimes two weeks. Two weeks, sometimes two weeks. Can you imagine? Today is, the attitude's just so changed. I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so tired. I'm so worn out. God help us. God help us. Christ loved the church and died for it. Christ loved the church and died for it. Amazes me how men will say, I've worked so many hours, and it, it's true. It's not to take away from their work. I know a lot of men that work, you know, they, they work. Uh, some that work in the woods, uh, work construction, and their bodies are drained. But if you can do that for 40, 50, 60 hours a week for money, it's a, it's a good thing to be a good worker. One hour for the Lord on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night. So they say, time to change. And the church today is lukewarm. God help us. God help us. Keep us from lukewarmness. Let's read these last verses. We're going to say, we love the church. We love the church because we can be used of the Lord. Remember, last Sunday night we were talking about 
the garments of the priesthood, the high priest, and that the priest ministers to the Lord. That's another mindset that has changed in the last 20 years. I go to church to get myself encouraged, get, get myself built up, and I really, you know, I get built up enough, one service, and I can go through whatever happens about ministering to the Lord. Ministering to the Lord. I go to church because I want to please the Lord Jesus. I want to be close to the Lord Jesus and, and worship Him. And I'm ministering to the Lord when I go to church. Not ministering to myself. I'm ministering to the Lord. Well, times are changing. Times are changing. Let's finish this up here. This is so beautiful. When uh, verse 10, verse 10. Well, let's read verse 10. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. A day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun. Man, we have had a, a street here of wonderful, beautiful weather. I love it. Sunshine several days in a row, and the leaves just all popping out, and the flowers popping out, and I love the flowering trees, I love the blossoms, I, I love the green grass, you know, it's the sun, it's the sun, it's the position of the sun, what position does the sun hold in your life, where are you at in your life? But God, God is a sun. He who makes the blossoms. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will, we, will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. You say, well, I've got things in my life that have been withheld. Life's not over. Life's not over. I read an uh, article, man was writing about heaven. He said, God is so good, God is so loving, heaven will be makeup time. You got a child that you lost young, you're going to make it all up. Make that time all up. You got a, a spouse husband or wife that you've been missing, you've been missing, they've gone on to heaven before, make up time will be coming. It'll be coming. You just, thousands of years, make up time. God is so good. God is so great. Might be a short time now. He's not going to withhold that forever. Just a devil and sin might delay, but it's makeup time is coming. It's going to be great. Six reasons why we love the church. We love the church because our lives have been changed. We found the Lord Jesus as our Savior. Secondly, we love the church because we can center our around, lives around it, build our lives around it. Thirdly, we love the church because we can bring our children up in it and there's nothing that compares. Fourthly, we love the church because we can praise the Lord in his house. Fifthly, we love the church because we have been strengthened and comforted over and over in God's house. Sixthly, we love the church because we can be used of the Lord. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. We stopped right there. We went long this morning. 
Say how to God, thank you for your word, how good your word is. Pray that we might love your house more. We love it. We love it. We're so, so thankful. Going through this time, uh, not being able to come in and meet together, though we've met. Uh, we've met in the park lot. We've met uh, online. But just to be in your house with your people, uh, help us to love your church more. We're thankful that Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, such love, uh, just infinite love. We pray that you bless our church, help us to love one another, and to serve you all the days of our lives. Then, we know we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, this is just a uh, little little taste of heaven here. We come to church each week. Uh, a taste of what we will taste forever in heaven. We're just so thankful. Thank you for your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 